Hey, it's Kate Stillman with yogahealer.com and I have a series for you for how to thrive in your body, in your family, and in your career. It's the How to Thrive with Ayurveda series and it's for all types of people, really for individuals who just want to understand some of the basics of Ayurvedic energy and yogic energetic philosophy so that they can thrive in their own bodies, whether you have you know, immune issues, whether you have a tendency towards colds and flus, whether you struggle with weight, low energy, joint pain, uh, mental, emotional issues. This personal healing track is really a great way to just check in with what we're learning today and how terms, uh, how energy works and how to thrive. Um, it's also great, this series for family healers. Many of us take upon that role in our family where we're the one that people come to and they don't feel well. Uh, we're also the ones who are often trying to prevent uh, issues from arising down the road, whether we do that through how we plan our meals or how we regulate our, our family rhythms. And those for you who are healers out there, this series is really a great one in terms of how to have a bigger impact and, and how to sharpen your skills. So it's really interesting because in this time when we have this really growing desire for wellness, we also have on average $2,600 being spent a year per child that's insured, add another $500 to that for out-of-pocket spending. So the typical kid, uh, United States statistically, is $3,000 in medical expenses. Uh, the supplement industry alone is a $21 billion industry just in the United States, whereas the Ayurvedic industry globally is about $3 billion. So we see that we're really reaching for supplements, we're reaching for pain pills. 85% uh, of American elderly, that's over 65, suffer from at least one chronic long-term uh, health disorder, right? We know that one in five Americans has, has an anxiety disorder, seven out of 10 Americans is overweight. We have issues, right? We have issues with inflammation and it's costing us. Whether we're paying out of pocket or whether we're co-paying in using the insurance industry, what we know is that there are components of wellness that we don't know about. We just don't understand really how our body works or how energy in our body works, how to orient towards the system. So that's exactly what we're gonna dive into first. And then in the next video, in video two, I'm gonna give you a checklist, the Ayurvedic Healer checklist, whether you're using that for personal healing, whether you're using that for family healing or as a pro healer. Uh, it works either way and you're gonna understand how the simple checklist gives you a, a way of seeing like where are some of the bigger gaps and what things you have nailed that you don't have to worry about. So we're gonna get into that in video two. And then in video three, I'm gonna give you a case study. I'm gonna give you a few examples of, of how this works in action. So how the body works and how the checklist works and how we use that uh, in living Ayurveda. And so that's it. So let's just dive right in with the first thing, which is how, how does the body work? Uh, how does the body work energetically? So energy in, in yogic philosophy is called Shakti. So we're really talking about how Shakti, I like to put a little heart on the eye because how Shakti works is really the name of the game in terms of understanding the body. So I'm gonna give you my body here. I'm very um, uh, ectomorphic. Just, for, just to show you, hey, let's give you a smiley face, okay? So what we wanna know in terms of this body, we all have a head and these four limbs and this trunk area. We wanna know how energy works and how it works from a cosmological perspective from the sort of the biggest energetic perspective looking from the outside in and experiencing being in a body from the inside out and so one of the first things that we notice is if you just stop for a moment and inhale and exhale we notice that energy works really in this very simple way of expanding and contracting so one of the first ways we know it works is that there's expanding and there's contracting and that these are polar opposites, right? So we wanna expand and contract. Expand where, how? Well, if you actually feel into it, you might notice that you wanna expand in all directions. You wanna expand both down and up and in front and back and sides. Like you really want the energy to move in all directions. There's a number of things that happen when energy can't do this, when the breath can't do this, and when prana, which is another word for how energy moves through, through, through breath in the body, 
through the flows of subtle energy in the body is when there's blockages we don't get that expansion contraction so if that's going on we know we've got a problem if we can't just expand up down in outside side top bottom right all these different ways now if we look at what's happening there just energetically right we're going to start to draw some arrows so energy wants to go out and then it wants to contract back in all right so the second way that energy works, number two, is that it moves up and down, that we're organized on a polarity. You have two feet beneath you, you have the crown of your head above you. So energy wants to flow up and down. And its first movement is really down from the crown chakra, from the crown chakra straight down, bam, 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 through the center line of the body, right? And that's the descent of consciousness it's the descent from the heavens into a body and to the earth it's also the movement like when you wake up in the morning what you might notice is like you want to urinate you wake up and energy wants to move down and out before you put put new things into your body even new things into your mind the body just wants to drop drop urine drop feces etc so this up down action how energy works now the, the this if this isn't happening, if this up down isn't happening, what will tend to happen is you'll often hear this, like people will say, oh, I feel if they're really busy and got a lot going on and overstretched, they'll say, I feel ungrounded, right? And what does ungrounded mean? It means not as much energy is moving down as is moving up, right? And so then we have an imbalance of flow. We talked before about what happens if we can't expand and contract. Well, what happens if energy can't move up and down? Now, what happens if energy just moves down? If all the energy is going down in the body, we have a whole other issue. We might have issues with, say, depression or heaviness or uh, even in a very physical level. You can see some people get swelling in their legs. They'll get edema where their legs will get swollen or they'll get varicose veins in their legs because down here, the energy energy is going down, but it's not getting bounced back up. Right, so what's happening there? Uh, well, we're gonna get a lot less blood flow, heart, head, we're gonna get a lot less mental, emotional stimulation, we'll start to see heaviness in the moods as well. So this up-down flow is, is crucial to keep an eye on. And in the third way that Shakti works, the third way that Shakti moves is that the four corners of the torso wanna be opened up. So we're just gonna name this one four corners. So we have these corners where the arm bones go into the shoulder sockets and the leg bones go into the hip sockets. So I was with a friend yesterday. We were stand up paddling down the roaring Snake River. Uh, we like to whitewater paddleboard this little posse in my family. And one of the guys who works construction, he's maybe close to 50. And he's complaining about his lower back pain. So at lunch, we took a little break and I got on my hands and knees and uh, on the beach and I showed him I'm like see if I lift my knees up with just my feet down so it's like a mini down dog and I squeeze my shins in so if this part goes in and my thighs go out this is Anyasara Yoga 101 for those of you who studied Anyasara Yoga if we squeeze this in and move this apart energy is going to flow down here and then the back this pinch in the back will get relieved. So these four corners of the torso, what we have is we want the arm and leg bones to be totally plugged into the torso so that we don't get overextended, so that we're grounded. But then what we also want to do is from the torso, we actually want to be able to open the gateways around the heart and then also around the lower back, sacrum, pelvis area that we want these two parts of the body, basically what's above the belt and what's below the belt, uh, to be able to be ex very expansive. And then what does that do? That bounces us back up to number one, that the inhale, exhale, the expansion, contraction cycle is very dynamic. When that's happening, energy can flow both up and down easily. You won't get back pain, you won't get neck pain, you won't get depressed, you won't get anxious, right? So you get that balance flow. And then we, we enhance that through opening the four corners of the torso. So I'm not showing you exactly how to do all of this right now, that it's a little bit more complex and we'll get more into that later. Uh, but what I'm really getting to you is that like, what is going on with these in your 
body or the bodies that you're taking care of if you're a parent or you're taking care of your parents or if you're you're if you're a pro healer and you're taking care of other people in the professional realm this is just a really way easy way to start to orient and what you'll notice i just erase this in here what you'll notice is that this line is where the chakras are right so we've got one two three four five in the throat six in the third eye seven in the crown right so this line is the line where the chakras line up this is where all the action is right this is the up and down flow but it's totally dependent on expansion contraction and it's totally dependent on these four corners being open and integrated right so both of those things so that's just a little primer on how shakti works what i'm going to talk about next is like basically how shakti speaks so that you can start to understand the language in which energy in the body remember shakti just means energy it's the primordial feminine energy right that makes everything get going and thrive this whole series is based on thrive so if we don't have expansion contraction if we don't have the upward and downward flow of energy and we don't have the four corners of the torso all opened up we're not gonna experience a lot of energy. We're not gonna, we're not gonna thrive. So let's learn next exactly how Shakti speaks. So there's two handouts that go with this first video. And the first one is the body map. So you can start to draw the energy flows on your body as I walk you through what could potentially going, be going on there. And the way that we're gonna understand what could be going on there is through how Shakti speaks. Remember, Shakti is energy, and this whole series is based on how to help you thrive, which has a lot to do with experiencing both grounded and uplifted energy simultaneously. Okay, so how does Shakti speak? What is her language? What is the language of energy in the body? And what we know about this, and it's so important to get this, is that energy speaks through opposites. It, we live in a world of, you can even tell from what we just talked about, like up, down, expand, contract, four corners or gateways that both connect and integrate and also expand or up level, right? That there's these different ways that we see the opposites in action. The yogis call those opposites spanda, right? Where we have pulsation uh, in the realms of duality. So the way that Shakti speaks is through, the, uh, through what we call gunas or qualities. And, and the other word for these qualities is, is really that they're opposites. They're the spectrums of opposites. We just basically, we can make some goalposts here and, and draw these opposites going out. So if we talk about, again, we draw our stick figure person in, right? And, and is there energy, is more energy going up or is more energy going down? So on this side, we could say energy is going up and on this side, we could say energy is going down. And where are we at? So if the person has, like we gave the, the some prop to your diagnosis, if there's more energy here, if there's more congestion, if there's more weight, if there's more awareness of, of that which is below, um, even living in the past versus the future, that's more down and back, right? So if there's more going on down here, we would maybe say, just like on the scale, well, here's the midway. If there's more energy going down. If it's like getting serious, we might put that dot right about there now if we look at other opposites right we talked about the energy going inward or outward is it expanding or is it contracting one of the ways the yogis talk about that pair of opposites is it subtle or is it is it dense right is it subtle or is it gross actually right what do we have on this spectrum and just in this example of the moods are really heavy and there's a lot of weight down here we would say that the energy is definitely more gross than subtle it's not a, it's not a disease of lightness if we have that if we have that heaviness in the legs and varicose veins and swelling and and all that we would say and weight extra weight below we would say that's all really more in the physical realm we would also use other opposites too like is the body hot or cold does the person feel more hot or more cold most of the time like where are they on this spectrum and say this person in particular really felt kind of cool and clammy right we maybe say cold here but then what's clammy well clammy is an effect of moisture versus dryness so there's another pair of opposites right we would have dry on this side and we would have moist on this side right and so on this we have 
a tendency to maybe be way over over here. And this is how it is with any kind of imbalance, is we can start to see these opposites, and there's there's lots of them. Dry and moist kind of relate to is there is it clear or is it cloudy? How would that that might we might see this more in the emotional realm. We could also see it in the urine though. <laughs> if a person pees and their urine is cloudy, that means there's a lot of impurities that are trying to get flushed out of the body through the urine, right? So say their urine is cloudy and say their mind is kind of foggy, like as if they're in a cloud, like they don't have clear, clear audience or clairvoyance, they don't have clear thinking, clear communication, it's hard for them to express themselves. So you can see in Ayurveda, we don't really separate what's happening from the physical to the mental, to the emotional, to the relational, right? We basically say, or even to the intuitive, we say like, you know what, it's all fair game. We see these gunas anywhere, it's all fair game, right? We're gonna put them on the list. So say the person's like really kind of cloudy and really struggling with not knowing where they wanna go next or what they wanna do next or who they wanna be next and there's just a feeling of heaviness and, and fog and maybe they're going through menopause and they've put on an extra 10 pounds and it's all in their butt and their lower belly and their thighs and they just feel like there's a weight on their shoulders that's pushing their energy down, right? And what they might also feel is that they are imploding, like they have the weight of the world on their shoulders and it's pushing them down. And you can start to see like, whoa, they're really on this side of the spectrum here, right? So knowing what the spectrums are is really, really super, super helpful. There's other ones like rough versus, rough versus smooth or slimy kind of a fun way to think about it. Um, this person may have like a slimy congestion when they wake up in the morning. They may have a lot of like phlegm and, and icky stuff. So what I want you to do is look at this worksheet that is the 20 gunas worksheet, right? We know that there's, there's, 20, there's 20 like slash 22. There's a bunch of gunas. To me, the number doesn't really matter. It's just starting to understand these different spectrums, that there's these spectrums, there's these opposites. And the more that we understand what's going on between, you know, between like subtle and gross. So another one is on liquidity, like how, how viscous is the energy in the body or how, how dense, right? How solid is it? And so we see there's, there's ways of understanding like viscosity, even in the blood, is the blood more liquidy? Is it more watery? Is it more solid and, and just heavy and like thick blood, right? Is there blood thick? So for this person, it might also be on the slimy side and on the dense side. And, and then what we see is like, okay, a lot of these have attributes that are in common, right? We, that often grossness will come with density, things that are more in the physical realm than in, than in the subtle realm. We can look at the same spectrum and let's do that now. In terms of a different issue, let's look at it actually in terms of anxiety. Okay, so now let's talk about what happens with issues with anxiety. And the reason we're going through this is, say you're trying to diagnose yourself or say you're trying to diagnose someone else in your family or say you're a pro healer and maybe a yoga teacher and, and you're noticing certain imbalances happening in your students uh, or you're a doctor who's interested in holistic theory and, and you're, you're wanting to be able to identify what's happening energetically in your patients. These are all good reasons to pay attention to this. So if we look now, like what, how does Shakti speak in terms of, we're gonna use the, the symptomology of someone who has anxiety uh, and we'll say they're overwhelmed and we'll say their weight is uh, yo-yoing. It goes up and down. Okay, so this is, this is, what, they're, this is what the person's experiencing. This is what they're, they're complaining about. You might see this even if you don't take all of these symptoms as we kind of go through them. Uh, if you just think of like what's going on with the person that you're thinking about in your mind as I'm talking about these opposites and you take your, your blank chart and you fill in where things are going on in these opposites, I think you're gonna start to have some insight and start to connect the dots in terms of the most basic way that we heal with Ayurveda, the basic way that we move from not thriving towards thriving. So the, my, whole, my whole business and brand is based on helping people thrive, how to orient towards thrive. If we can understand what's causing us not to thrive and what, how Shakti speaks with the specific attributes are of the ways that we're going out of balance, it makes it like very easy, very straightforward uh, and very rapid on the healing path.
Okay, so now let's take this anxiety. Uh, for someone who's experiencing a lot of anxiety, let's say she's, uh, she's a high school gal, she's maybe 17 years old, she's applying to colleges, she's overwhelmed, uh, she's uh, usually a good student, but she's now, it looks, feels tired all the time, she keeps getting cold, so we could say there's immune issues here. Um, her sleep is, is um, erratic, like sometimes she sleeps for six hours and then sometimes she sleeps for even 12 hours at, at a stretch. And she's having trouble actually, even though she's only 17, she's, she's, she feels and is uh, overweight. She, she's maybe carrying an extra 10 to 15 pounds um, and, and she can lose it, but then it always comes right back. And she's kind of worried because you can go off to college and she's heard about the freshman 15 and she's worried about that. Okay, so that's our, that's our example for what's going on. And now we're gonna look at these spectrums. With anxiety, energy is generally going up. It's, going, it's in the head, right? Energy's in the head. There's a lot of, of thinking, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of emotion. Fear energy Ayurvedically goes up and out versus intensity energy, which goes up and in, which might look more like uh, extreme focus or concentration. Uh, kids that are more in the workaholic trends where they're like hyper-focused and getting things done, that would be more up and in energy. Anxiety is more up and out energy. So is energy going up or down? Well, that's pretty easy, right? Up, we know it's going up. Now, this tendency to, of, of moving out versus moving in is an energy that's more subtle than it is gross. It's going out into the ethers as opposed to in towards the density of the physiology. So subtle or gross, her energy is more on the subtle side. Is she hot or cold? Uh, depending on her, usually with this pattern, we usually have cold hands, cold feet have trouble um, just feeling warm and feeling relaxed inside. So usually with this pattern, we're a more on, on the cold side. Dryness, moistness, or oiliness, even just seeing on the skin, like what is the skin like? Is the skin more dry or is the skin more moist? And we'll say her skin is tending more on, on the dry side. Is her mind more cloudy or clear? Uh, she might actually have a lot of clarity. Because she's so etheric, she might her mind might naturally see things and hear things with, with a, a lot of uh, perception. It's not a disease of heaviness here. Even though she may be overweight, there's actually more lightness. There's more energy ascending than descending. So she might be on this side of clear, rough, or slimy. How we, might we see this in terms of, of even her emotions? The overwhelm, when we feel truly overwhelmed, it can feel like the world is actually rough, like the world is unfriendly, that it's not easy street. We might actually not feel that well nourished. We might not feel nourished in our relationships. Uh, we might not feel nourished by the foods that we're eating. And it might just, we might just feel like it's rough and we have to have a tough exterior and protect ourselves in order to get by. That's often the physio, like I'm just energetically showing you what this can feel like. For those of you who don't experience anxiety at all, you might be really unfamiliar with that and you might actually just notice like, hey, you kind of feel like life is good. It's all okay. It's not a problem. But other people are not having that experience who are in this anxiety overwhelm. So rough, she might be more on this side. Um, liquidity versus density. And what we want to look at with these is not necessarily every single one of the gunas. We really want to isolate, like what are the ones that are making the biggest difference? What are the ones that are standing out the most? With her, it's that energy is going up. It's that energy is subtle, that there's, there's dryness and there's roughness. Uh, density versus solidity, that might not apply that much here. So these are ways of just starting to get what's happening. Slowness versus sharpness. We could see this in terms of, this is another one that has to do with speed. So we could put sharp on this side and we could put slow on this side. And even say she has these really intense panic attacks. She might start having panic attacks. Who we would say is like, that's probably more on the sharper side where it's like a lot of energy all at once creating a scene. It's a, it's a faster moving energy. Uh, and it's got a level of intensity versus slowness. Slowness is usually more of like chronic, long-term, or even people who energetically move really slowly, but that's maybe more of that pattern. Often when people are anxious, they're, they're moving faster. They're like, oh, I forgot my keys, I'm running over there, and like, oh, I've got to do this, and 
going over there and, and it's, it's that sort of like jumpy, erratic mm. action, right? And so that's another way to see is there like, is there steadiness or is there erratic action? So you can actually make up your own opposites. We could put steady over here and we could put erratic over here. Now, why does this matter, <laughs> right? Why do we want to go through and actually look and find out what are the descriptors? What are the qualities? All qualities are, are descriptors. They're, they're ways of giving language to what is arising, to what's going on here. The more we understand this, if we start to have the language of it, we want to just simply go towards the center, right? Just bring all these towards the center. Go towards the opposite. Go towards balance, right? And that's, that's the most easy way to start to understand. We'll put her erratic over here. So she wants to go from being erratic to steady. Well, how the heck is she going to do that? She wants to go from her energy going up to energy going down. Well, how is she going to do that? She wants to go from being cold to being warm, from being dry to being moist, from being clear to actually being cloudy, to being a little bit like softer and a little more chilled out, right? A little actually foggier, if you will. She wants to go from being rough to being more slimy or being more unctuous is a word that we use a lot in our Ayurveda. So we want to start to cultivate the opposites. Okay, so let's look now at, at, at which of these are going to be the biggest descriptors because that's really where we want to go next. So number one would be steady. That if, if we could get her rhythms more steady, that, that would probably decrease the anxiety, which would probably actually allow the weight to also release. People have anxiety, the body's gonna hold on often to weight. Body can also struggle holding on to weight, and that's and that's usually if it's more chronic over time. All right, number two, we want to bring her energy down, right? We want to teach her how to how to ground, how to get energy in her legs, energy in her feet, maybe open up the hips, maybe open up the the uh, hip socket, sockets, lower back area, lower chakras, so energy starts going from the upper chakras down into the lower chakras from the head, more into the pelvis. Just looking at that up-down flow, really simple. Looking at the four corners of the torso, opening the hips so that energy can then go down. If we look at these other things from subtle to gross, what does that mean? Well, maybe it's just, it's just uh, gross would be like spending more time sleeping than awake and thinking, which has a lot to do with, with steadiness in her, we could say steady rhythms, and that we'd want, we'd want maybe more sleep or more um, gross body experiences. Another like gross body experiences that we eat a lot in our Ayurveda is we take oil and we just rub it on the body. We just literally like get in the body and start to bring the body's energy just a little bit heavier. Oil is, is much heavier than say water, right? There's a, even though it's light and it floats up, the viscous nature on the body actually helps us feel more grounded than just taking a shower. Okay, so those are some really simple things that she could start to do. Notice too, we had her on more on the dry side, dry side so doing like that oil massage will bring her more on, on the moist side. So those are just some simple things that we could do, steady her rhythms, bring energy down, and get her more in her gross body. So what I want you to do now is look at your sheet and, and fill out just like what are some of the, what's going on in these opposites, and then if you were just to say, what is the opposite of the top three things that this person should do to move into balance, whether that's you, whether that's one of your kids, or one of your parents, or whether it's one of your students or clients or your patients, now, what I wanna to say too is you can actually do this on a meta level. So we just looked at it really physically for one person. Uh, I'm sorry, really specifically for one person, but you could also look on a much larger scale. You could look, say if you're teaching a yoga class, you could look at your whole yoga class and just see as the students come in, is there energy more up here and there's all this chatter and there's a lot going on and people are kind of rushing about and, and you know, putting their purse in the lobby and then going, grabbing something from their purse and coming back to the like, is the energy more up and mobile or is it down? Is it more down and steady? People kind of walk in, how you doing? All right, my, you know, my back hurts, my blood. right? And just noticing on, that on a group level what's going on. And when you do that, especially if you're on more of the, the pro healer track, you're going to start to see like you notice big patterns happening and then you can adjust 
how you're teaching groups or how you're leading groups so that you're really working with the majority of the energetic flow in the group. And when you do that, you start to get a massive traction. Same thing's true on a family level. Families will have tendencies. And when you work the opposite gunas for that family tendency, it actually mixes, mixes things up. I want to use one more example before we go on of that. My family is very, we tend more on the steady side and less on the erratic side. So the other night I was like, let's do something different. And I thought, what's really kind of just different, out of the box, a little more mobile. And what we decided to do was take our bikes to town. We packed a picnic and we did a tour around Driggs, Idaho. And we went to the skate park and rode our bikes around the skate park. And then we went to the baseball park and went and had our picnic. And then we rode around. There was a party going on. We stopped and we socialized. And we got out of our box of what we do every night. So that's just an example how, as even as a family organism, we can start to cultivate the opposites to find more dynamic balance because everything that happens in here when we know how to pulsate the opposites gives us dynamic balance. So just to review in this video we talked about how Shakti works, how the big energy works so that you can orient you and those you love and take care of towards Thrive. You learned about expansion, contraction, about up, down, and about the four corners of the torso. And then you learned about the gunas or these pairs of opposites, these qualities in which imbalance speaks to us. Right, so that we can start to diagnose, that we can start to prevent, that we can react to something that's actually gone a little, little further than we may have wanted it to go. Right, and we start to reel it back in into a place of dynamic harmony. So that was an overview of video one. Next in video two, we're gonna go into the Ayurvedic Healer Checklist. This is just a checklist that I have mentally run through for years. It's a checklist we used to actually structure the whole Living Ayurveda course, which We'll tell you more about that if you're interested in, in really learning all this stuff um, a little bit deeper, whether it's for yourself or whether it's for your family or whether it's as a pro healer. So what we're going to get into next is this, this manifesto checklist as an Ayurvedic healer. You don't have to be an Ayurvedic healer. I'm just going to show you what I as an Ayurvedic healer found really, really fast and effective so that you can apply it to yourself, to your family, and to the people you take care of. We'll see you in video two.